Ladies and gentlemen, greetings. April 3, 2008, marked a day that swiftly transformed into a haunting ordeal for her. Engaged in her routine domestic chores, an excruciating, stabbing sensation abruptly pierced her abdomen. It seemed as though something relentless was burrowing deep within her. The agony intensified, eclipsing her senses until she succumbed to unconsciousness. The awakening occurred amidst a sterile atmosphere, a sterile scent permeating the air. Consciousness unfurled in tandem with the bright hospital room's starkness, and her eyes fluttered open, greeted by the unfamiliarity of the surroundings. A panorama of bleached linens enveloped her, casting a clinical hue upon her awakening. In the awakening's embrace lay the stark reality of a hospital bed, its contours cradling her form, while an ethereal haze of anesthesia gradually loosened its grip. The figures surrounding her morphed into clarity. Her husband, a steadfast sentinel, maintained a vigil by her bedside, emanating concern akin to an unsung symphony in his gaze. His presence was a salve amidst the enigmatic disarray of her awareness. A medical custodian, the doctor, wielded the daunting mantle of delivering a grave proclamation, acute appendicitis. This dire condition unfolded like a novella of distress within her, the insidious offender, her appendix, a seemingly innocuous entity nestled at the terminus of her convoluted intestinal tract. Its betrayal manifested in infection or obstruction, a clandestine insurgent that waged a campaign of excruciating torment upon her. The discourse wore the tapestry of urgency, a vivid tapestry delineating the precarious precipice upon which her health precariously balanced. The doctor's cadence, resonant with professional gravity, underscored the impending peril, the looming prospect of appendicil rupture, an ominous prelude to a cataclysm of perilous ramifications. Navigating the labyrinthine corridors of deliberation, she grappled with the weighty decision presented. Surgery emerged as the panacea, a daunting yet indispensable odyssey to exorcise the malevolent spectre lurking within her. A maelstrom of trepidation swirled within her consciousness, tethered to uncertainties about the surgical gambit. The surgical tableau unfolded, a meticulously choreographed ballet of scalpels and sterility. The surgeon, an architect of precision, orchestrated an incision upon her abdomen, an artful aperture through which resolution beckoned. An endoscope served as the conduit for the expurgation of the insidious appendage, the harbinger of her distress. Post-surgery, a semblance of relief embraced her amidst the anesthesia-induced fugue, heralding the surgeon's optimistic refrain, successful extraction, a complete excision of the offending appendix. Yet, the overture of triumph was tempered by the exigency of prolonged convalescence, an extended sojourn within the hospital's sterile embrace. The tenuous calm shattered with the emergence of a clandestine antagonist, infection, an uninvited interloper that insinuated its presence within the surgical wound. The spectre of staph bacteria, unveiled through meticulous scrutiny of extracted fluids, announced its malevolent residency, instigating a harrowing encore of surgical intervention. In the hushed symphony of anesthesia, a spectral witness to conversations drifted. The medical staff, arbiters of her fate, engaged in a disconcerting sonata of apprehension. Their sotto voce discussions, a haunting motive of doubt, revolved around her cherished kin, her two-year-old daughter, her father, her stalwart husband. In the labyrinth of unconsciousness, these deliberations coalesced into a disquieting crescendo, a discordant symphony of uncertainty that unsettled her very core. Emerging from the fog of anesthesia, she found herself enveloped in the ICU's sterile embrace, a cocoon of intensive care shrouding her tenuous existence. Family members, an amalgam of hope and despair etched upon their countenances, 
clustered around her, their silent supplications woven into the fabric of their apprehensive gazes. Alas, her attempts at reassurance faltered, muffled by the intubation's obstructive embrace, rendering her voice an ephemeral wisp in the ambient silence. She yearned to dispel their apprehensions, to reassure them of her tenacious grip on life, of a nascent resurgence, despite the dire tableau unfurling around her. Upon the doctor's inquiry regarding her well-being, her response was a triumphant gesture. Exiting the room, the doctor sought consultation with her parents, inadvertently allowing her to catch fragments of their discussion. Her mother, visibly distressed, implored the doctor for clarity regarding her condition and the necessary steps forward. Meanwhile, her husband inquired about the severity of her situation, and the doctor's response underscored the gravity of her condition, discussing the potential for brain damage and exploring available treatment options. Due to a shortage of additional beds, her parents and husband reluctantly departed from the hospital. Despite harbouring a painful sore throat, she was determined to convey her discomfort. Armed with a pen and paper, she crafted a message directed at the attending nurse. She proceeded to communicate her distress regarding her sore throat to the nurse attending to her. The nurse, responsible for her care, offered a comforting gesture, acknowledging that some discomfort was to be expected, though regretfully, the tube could not be removed. Approximately two hours later, a significant event unfolded. One nurse announced her intention to collect her daughter from school, followed shortly by the second nurse's plan to take a brief break to hydrate. Shortly after the nurses left, she noticed her breathing becoming increasingly difficult as sputum accumulated. A blockage in the tube ended the flow of oxygen to her lungs. Despite her efforts, she found herself unable to vocalise her distress, her body racked with helplessness. Moments stretched into agonising hours. Suddenly, an alarm blared, and a swarm of doctors and nurses rushed into her room, their urgent calls for specialised aid resounding like chaotic echoes. She was aware of their frantic efforts, but found herself unable to draw breath. A physician injected a solution into the tube to clear the blockage. In response, her breathing ceased, and her heartbeat faltered. It was at that moment she felt disconnected from her physical form. When her eyes opened again, she discovered herself suspended in the air, clothed in a hospital gown. A profound calm replaced her pain, while below, her body was encircled by a team of medical professionals. Abruptly, she sensed a mystical force tugging her upward, as if beckoning her away from this realm. Filled with apprehension and torn by the thought of leaving her family and her body behind, uncertain of her return, she resisted. But the force was unyielding, and she reluctantly acquiesced to her departure. As she left her earthly existence, she embarked on an extraordinary voyage. Encountering a grand, luminous tree, she witnessed playful, affectionate creatures frolicking around it, their voices resonating deeply within her. Her journey continued, shedding her physical and emotional burdens. Meeting vibrant, unearthly beings who greeted her warmly, she proceeded forward. Approaching a garden, she encountered children adorned with exquisite, diverse skin tones, joyfully playing amidst fields and around a majestic fountain. Drawing nearer to the garden, she observed individuals of various ages, communicating through their thoughts and some immersed in books. In this place, she sensed no anguish or affliction. The woman, caught between the ethereal realm and the mortal plane, experienced a series of profound sensations that oscillated between the earthly and the otherworldly. Initially burdened by concerns for her family's suffering, her anxiety yielded to the hope that they would eventually join her in the same transcendental space. Moving forward, she encountered a vibrant assembly of elderly figures joyfully traversing a garden adorned with blooming flowers beside a serene river, 
contemplating the distant brilliance that beckoned her curiosity, potentially hinting at her ultimate destination. As she approached, the radiant glow intensified, enveloping her in an overwhelming surge of love. The beckoning light pulled her, guiding her towards what seemed like an ultimate sanctuary. Closer to it, she felt engulfed by its warmth and serenity, as if merging with its essence. This radiant luminescence bestowed upon her an unparalleled sense of pure love and tranquility, liberating her soul and filling her with profound gratitude for the enigmatic force steering her toward this extraordinary encounter. A gentle touch, suffused with intense affection, touched her, overwhelming her with an intense feeling of love. A comforting voice urged her to stay calm amidst her myriad of questions, initiating her journey back home. She couldn't help but wonder whether the abruptness of her return was disproportionate to the exquisite nature of her experience. Regaining consciousness, she found herself confined to a hospital bed while a team of doctors diligently worked to resuscitate her. The lingering presence of the enigmatic force, drenched in love and tranquility, persisted in the background. Despite her reluctance to return to her physical form, a resolute voice emerged, reminding her that her earthly mission remained unfulfilled, and many lives depended on her. An enigmatic force compelled her back into her corporeal body, triggering intense pain upon awakening amidst a flurry of medical attention. Despite her fervent pleas to stay, her heart had ceased, and a determined doctor successfully revived her. Initially embittered, she gradually regained her composure. Sharing her near-death experience, she found resonance with the doctor's mention of similar encounters, although she professed no particular beliefs. Following this extraordinary event, she contemplated faith to grasp the inexplicable. Returning home, a myriad of emotions swirled within her. Grateful to reunite with her family, she struggled to articulate her profound encounter. Her husband remained sceptical, attributing it to a surgical hallucination, while she remained resolute in its authenticity, vehemently denying any hallucinatory or chemical explanation. Convinced that this life-altering experience would shape her future, she harboured immense gratitude for a renewed chance at life, fostering an unwavering determination to lead a purposeful existence and make a meaningful impact.